My name is Lois and I am a sterilized First Nations person of Treaty 6, living on reserve in Alberta, and I am also a post-op transsexual of 14 years. We must have honest conversations about the dark side of transition. We must talk about detransitioners and their stories. And my story, from a regretful transition to medical assistance and dying, I feel like I have contributed to the genocide of my people. I am more than a statistic. I am more than the color of my skin. I am more than your idea of what a BIPOC trans person should be. Soon I will be another dead Indian, but until then, I am here to share my story. What a completely crazy story that she's she's painting herself here exclusively as a victim, not even sexually or, or surgically, but again and again because she's a First Nation person. It's very sad, Duke, and, and unfortunately these lies, this uh, mental and spiritual poison that's being pumped out by the elites, not just in Canada, but here in the United States, across Western Europe, and even at the international level, um, it's absolutely sick and twisted and demented. You're right, there needs to be uh, personal responsibility here. You know, people who are uh, duped into this are not entirely uh, blameless in this, and you would think that this would cause some pause and a re-examination of the the worldview that produced this kind of disaster. But you know, I, I do have some sympathy for this individual. One of the things that he's complaining about is that you know he's desperately seeking for help. He's he, he's he's in terrible physical pain. He's in terrible mental anguish. Uh, and and one of the things that he said, he's quoted in the news report saying, is that they're more interested in my pronouns than in the fact that I, I'm just in this terrible physical pain. Uh, and and I think one of the things that's going on here, Duke, and we've talked about this in previous episodes, is that uh, a lot of these people are being deceived. They're being told by their doctors that, hey, you're going to feel so much better after we castrate you. You're just going to be your true self. Um, now, obviously, again, there's a, an element of personal responsibility here. You have an obligation, and we should have seen this during the last few years during the uh, words that I can't say to avoid getting us censored, but uh, uh, this should be very obvious that you can't trust these doctors anymore, that you need to be asking questions. But what's happening here is these trusted authority figures, your government, your, your doctor in a fancy white coat, they're telling you, hey, you're going to feel great. There's really very little risk of side effects. You, know, you might have a little pain, but don't worry, we can control that. Uh, and then the reality is totally different. Uh, the, the pain is incredible. It doesn't actually fix your underlying issues. Right? Chopping off your private parts isn't going to fix the, the mental and spiritual issues that you're going through that caused you to think chopping off your private parts in the first place would be a good idea. So uh, th there's, bl there's plenty of blame to go all around here. You're right. There's definitely a, a need for personal accountability. But uh, I, I think the people that really need to be held responsible here are the, the government officials and the quote unquote medical authorities that are lying to people and telling them that they're going to feel great, that they're going to become their true selves after they submit to these surgical mutilations. It's preposterous. It's disgraceful. Uh, and it's time for people to start asking serious questions, not just on the trans stuff, not just on the, the C word and the V word, but across all these issues. At this point, if the government medical industrial complex told me the sky was blue, I'd have to go to the window and actually check that out for myself. They have no credibility left.